Hey guys, the other night I was in the chat room, I was talking to a guy that was like atheist, agnostic, and uh, he's going to church with me. That's right. And before I talk to you about how you can go to church with me, this is my keychain for my motorcycle. The yes reminds me that I'm a sinner saved by grace in Jesus Christ. Uh, here's what how you can go to church with me. You go to shockonow.net, right there. And by the way, I'm going to read you some shocking Bible passages right now that you may not have read in the in the Bible. But anyways, you go there, and then you go here where it says, Go to church now. Click that, and you can go to church with me. Also, I strongly suggest you go here to this, this radio thing, and click the second one down here that says, The Madness, right here. The Madness. Click that one, and have your speakers on. You'll hear an awesome radio show. Now... Let's get in to the Bible. This is a Bible that my friend D-Man for Christ bought me. He put Shaka Now on it and he sent it to me. And what I want to read to you guys are some Bible passages that I don't think uh, most people, I would say 99% of the people out there, um, if they've never read the Bible, very interesting. First, I'm going to read you something uh, from John 3.18 that uh, a lot of people do not know that Jesus said this. So let's go real quick. It says, this is the words of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And it says, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Now, this is Jesus Christ saying that. He's basically saying the reason why people don't come to him is because they do evil deeds and they feel like if they come to him, their deeds are going to be shown in the light. Go ahead and read John 3.18. It is phenomenal. Now, Listen to this. There's a passage in the Bible where it talks about Jesus Christ when he comes back and he actually goes to war against the armies of the Antichrist. And it's Revelation 19:11. Listen, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Faithful and true. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. Now listen to this phrase. And he was clothed with a vesture, like a robe, dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now, when it says that he has a vesture dipped in blood, if you do research on what that is, it is the blood of his enemies. When Jesus Christ comes back, he is fighting against a evil world system. And, it's, and also it says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And basically Jesus uh, kicked some royal royal antichrist rear end and he is triumphant that is uh, Revela revelation 19 11. now let's go to romans 1 16 and as you read down through romans 1 16 it says that the creation of god god's creation is proof that he exists listen it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And listen to what it says. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, God's creation, uh, the planet, the heavens, God expects us to believe just by seeing that. 
and w- and we're to understand that there needs to be a creator. I agree with that. I did a radio show at shockandow.net and I asked people, do you agree that the creation around you is sufficient enough for you to believe in God? And, and people were like, yeah, I believe that. Go to Romans 1.16. It basically says also, uh, as I quoted here, it says that they are without excuse. So people cannot stand in front of God on Judgment Day and say, well, I didn't know his creation is sufficient enough. Now, there might be some... Uh, you know, God-hating atheists, uh, pagans, Wiccans, whatever, that disagree with that. But that is what the Bible says. So the problem is, is there is no higher authority than God. So it's good to look at God's standard and see if your life meets what he's uh, telling us to do, rather than to go ahead and have a Burger King religion and try to change God into a form of our own. Now listen to this. Luke 22, 35, Jesus says... And he said to them, when I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, in other words, they didn't have any money, they didn't have proper clothing, you know, to go on a journey. He says, did you lack anything? And the disciples said nothing. Now watch what Jesus says. Then he said unto them, and I'm reading from Luke 22, 35. But now he that hath the purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Jesus is telling his disciples to buy a sword. He didn't tell them to go on a a stabbing spree. He told them to buy a sword. Jesus knew that his disciples would be more well defended with the sword. And he wanted to protect them. Watch what Jesus says in the next passage. He's not talking about a, a spiritual sword. Because there's some swords leaning up against the wall here. Watch. Uh, it's And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Let's mosey right along and let's end this with revelation. Some people believe that the Antichrist is living right now. Let's read from Revelation. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his ten horns, ten crowns. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now, it says here that one of his heads looked like it was wounded, but the wound was healed. Some people believe that there will be an assassination attempt on the Antichrist, and he lives through it. He basically does a mock resurrection, copying what Jesus Christ did. And we know Lucifer copies God. Now watch what happens here. It says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. The power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So this Antichrist is one tough dude. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And then... God says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. When you read that in the Bible, what they're saying is, you better pay attention. We need to pay attention. Because now he's going to say, right here, that this beast does great wonders so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now, this is the part where it talks about a mark. We're hearing a lot about this mark in a cashless society. And it says, uh, right here, I'm reading from uh, Revelation. I want to give you the proper uh, 15, 16, going down here to 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads. Now, I've done some research on this, and I did an entire radio show on this. Um, You guys should go to shockanow.net, click right here, the radio link, and you can listen to our call-in radio shows. I've had pagans call in and I've talked to them live. I've had pagans call in and sing on the radio show live. Um, We've had Wiccans call in. We've had atheists call in. Um, You name it. We've had people call in the live radio show. You can also go to... Um, let me give you the link real quick because I'm running out of time. Go right here to shockanow.net and have your speakers on. 
God bless you, and Maranatha.